G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for yet another trade update. This is the first video that we've done since the trade period has actually started. We did do, of course, a big trade and draft preview with our man Lenny Fogliani on a podcast yesterday. So if you haven't checked that out, it is worth checking out uh, because Lenny has great insight onto the draft and in particular, some of the WA boys having worked with a lot of them in the past. So just a little plug for the podcast there if you want some more content. It's a great place to go. And just on that, if you are a regular listener to our podcast, you should be aware that we had some issues with our podcast host uh, in terms of the audio-only platforms. So if you haven't seen our latest podcast pop up on those yet, you might have to search True Footy Podcast again, and there's a new one there as well. So just a heads up, if you haven't been keeping up with our podcast, but also watch some of our videos, that's the reason why they haven't popped up. Anyway, we're going to unpack a few of the trade stories that came out today. Some of the stuff that we knew was coming, some of the stuff has been a little bit more of a surprise. And and I'm just going to talk through some of the stuff that we learned today. First of all, some of the free agency compensation was locked in. George Hewitt made his way to Carlton. That's a pretty good piece of business for Carlton, I think. There's been some criticism around, you know, it being a four-year deal for Hewitt, but I think that's kind of the going rate for a lot of free agents. At the end of the day, they're not giving up picks for Hewitt, and I think he's a solid sort of B-grade level player. Adds to their midfield depth. They're addressing a clear need in that midfield, in my opinion, anyway, and I do think a four-year deal for Hewitt is fairly low risk. So, good piece of business by them, uh, and the news out of that as well is that Sydney have been compensated with pick 39 overall. On what has been a kind of familiar note in previous seasons, there seems to be a lot of optimism around Carlton at the moment. It seems to be the narrative every trade period because they've obviously traded in heavy over the last couple of years, but I think they're starting to find a good couple of pieces to really round out their best 22. In the last couple of years, they've traded in expensive flankers in Saad, Williams, and Jack Martin as well, and those guys still have time to come on and be good, but what I like is that they've really addressed their midfield needs. They're probably going to land Adam Cherry, you'd think, and now Hewitt as well adds a little bit of class and hardness to a midfield that probably lacks that depth. So I really do think they've set themselves up pretty well with their recent signings. Yes, you could argue they probably spent too much in salary on some of those flankers, but I think there's plenty of reason for them to be optimistic. And I do think Adam Chera, as I said in the podcast yesterday, may be the best talent on offer in this trade period and Carlton are set to land as well. In some other news that is Carlton related, Lewis Young from the Western Bulldogs did request a trade to Carlton. It's almost a little bit of a surprise because you've got a guy who's sort of like a, a young key position defender who can ruck as I understand it, but it's kind of a strange one where you'd think the Bulldogs are in the market for both key backs and rucks at the moment. So if he can't get a gig there, it does seem odd to me that he would get to Carlton pretty easily. So whether that means the Bulldogs simply don't rate him, I don't know, but that was some news that came out of today. Mabio Chol also officially joined the Gold Coast Suns with the Tigers set to receive 38 in addition to their plethora of second round picks. We did know for a while that Chol was probably going to end up at the Gold Coast Suns. It just sort of remained to be seen what the compensation would be. And I think Richmond can be relatively happy with that. I do think they would rather keep Chol. I do quite like what he brings to his team. He's super athletic. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's still only about 23, 24. And the extra second rounder does help Richmond potentially sort of trade some of their second rounders up. Um, looking at the dogs in particular, I've talked about that in previous videos. But the more picks they have in that second round, it means more points that the dogs can potentially acquire. So I do think Richmond are going to trade up in this trade period for better draft picks. We did have one official trade today. It was a pick swap between the Gold Coast Suns and Collingwood. Collingwood has traded its future second, third, and fourth round picks to Gold Coast in exchange for picks 22, 46, 58, and 59, and a future fifth rounder. So trading almost entirely out of next year's draft, they're going to have a first rounder and a fifth rounder as it currently stands. But the benefit of that is that they can almost certainly match any bid for Nick Dacos as it comes. There's a bit of talk about whether he goes pick one or even pick three that he might get bidded on, which would be a bit of a shock to me. But Collingwood can breathe a little easier knowing they've got the points to match Dacos bid without pushing back next year's first rounder. Some of the more juicy news that came out of today, or at least in my opinion, I am a West Coast fan, so you can understand why I had this reaction, was that West Coast have inquired about the availability of Sam Pepper from Port Adelaide, a player that was supposedly keen on in the 2016 draft, ended up going with Venables instead. This one was a big surprise. I've been talking about how my understanding was the Eagles were super tight on list space. So I don't know if it was about this year or next year they're looking at trading him. I'd imagine this year if it's the trade period started and they're having those kind of conversations now. But apparently Sam Palpepper is gettable. He wants more midfield time, so he's interested in a potential move. I don't know if West Coast can really offer that, to be honest. I know the midfield is a bit of a weakness, but the issue with West Coast is more in about 12 to 24 months when... Redden and Shuey move on, who are we going to replace him with? So straight off the bat, I don't know how interested Pal Pepper is about moving specifically to West Coast, but as an Eagles fan, I'm actually uh, pretty into this idea. I've 
been talking about our need for a smooth transition after those midfielders retire. What Power Pepper adds as well is a very, very different skill set to our current mids. He's very crash and bash, explosive, very aggressive. Our midfield is, other than Yo, not amazing at the contested stuff. It's probably inflated a little bit when Nat is playing it well. So I totally get why West Coast is interested when those guys retire. He probably has a spot on ball. And I think potentially getting him and Petrovsky Seaton, while they may not be, you know, guns, they at least got some upside. We're not in a position to trade in, you know, a superstar young midfielder. So we've got to look at undervalued players at other teams not quite played in their right position. Getting those guys at age 22, 23, 24, whatever they are, at least gives us a chance of preserving what could be a quality team in a couple of years time. The other big question is, I'm not even sure how this deal would get done. I think he's got a couple of years on his contract. For the quality of player that he is, a first rounder I think is off limits, whether it be this year, which we can't even trade, or next year's first rounder, he certainly isn't worth that. A future second is probably what we'd be willing to offer, but from a Port Adelaide perspective, is there much incentive for them to on trade a contracted player in Pal Pepper, who they probably still rate for a future second? I don't think that's going to cut it. So I'm at a bit of a loss as to how this deal would get done. But it's a wait and see for me. I'll be pretty excited if we manage to land a couple of undervalued midfielders at other clubs. Maybe Port Adelaide's interested in a bit of a salary dump because we know that Pal Pepper has had a bit of baggage with some off-field incidents and the like. Maybe he's not valued to them and uh, that's the Eagles' best avenue to getting him on the list. The other side note of this is I wonder if it does open the door potentially, say, if Pal Pepper did move west, uh, whether Port Adelaide would more seriously look at Luke Dunstan because that's the thing they're probably lacking a little bit of midfield depth themselves. So it seems a bit odd that they would be willing to offload Pal Pepper. You'd think you'd want another good midfielder in the door. And I think Luke Dunstan presents as the perfect opportunity to add to a list that has already got a good midfield, but probably lacks after those superstars. And we know that Boak in particular is sort of at the end of his career. So this could cause a little bit of a domino effect where, you know, Pal Pepper leaves, suddenly Dunstan's in, they get Laddams out of the club, they've got a bit more money. It could shake things up a bit. Just before we move on from the Eagles, looks like we've sounded out Jordan Sweet uh, from the Bulldogs, which was an interesting one because the Bulldogs, again, need a Ruckman, but allegedly only offered him a one-year rookie deal at best. So on that logic, I think it's gettable. I think he'll certainly get a main list spot at the Eagles, probably a two-year contract as well. And we desperately need a Ruckman now that Vardy's retired. I do really rate Bailey Williams, but after that, it's Callum Jamison and Nick Nat's going to be, what, 32, 31 next year. It does appear that Sydney have entered the race for Peter Laddams. Apparently, they're requiring about him uh, to be part of the Alia Alia trade last year, but it didn't eventuate. So obviously they've got a need for a ruck as well and potentially a bit more salary to play with. Now they've potentially lost Jordan Dawson in addition to Hewitt as well. So that's one to watch. And even with Tom Hickey playing well, I think he's 31 next year or something like that. So Laddams really does fit the age profile for the Sydney Swans. In terms of Callum Coleman-Jones, apparently North Melbourne have offered a future third round pick for his services. And I presume Robbie Tarrant is probably going to be rolled into that trade as well so that Richmond can preserve their free agency compensation. But Richmond have said that they want pick 20 because that's roughly the equivalent of what he was taken with. I think he might have even been pick 20 in his own draft. The unfortunate thing for Richmond here is that he's uncontracted, only played nine games. And while he is talented, there is the threat of the preseason draft. Given he's out of contract, he can walk into the open market and North Melbourne have pick one in that scenario as well. So it looks like North are going to be playing hardball, offering a future third. 38, their current pick in this year's draft is probably a fairer deal. Well, undoubtedly a fairer deal. It's going to be a better pick that's closer to a, a late second, early third for a wooden spoon team. Whether Richmond really want another second round pick in this year's draft, uh, that remains to be seen with <laughs> they've got so many this year as it stands. But unfortunately for Richmond, they're probably going to cop a bit of a loss on this Coleman Jones deal. At the end of the day, he's out of contract and North had the threat of the preseason draft. One very interesting deal has uh, caught my eye and it's the Gold Coast Suns potentially doing a salary dump on the chest of North Melbourne. Essentially in this scenario, the Gold Coast Suns would send their priority pick 19 and McPherson for a future second round pick. So obviously that doesn't add up. That's massively in North Melbourne's favor. But with the Gold Coast Suns having to somewhat overpay a lot of the youngsters to get them to stay at the club in previous years, they have a glut of overpaid reasonable players. I think McPherson does have a lot to offer at AFL level, and I think it's a great get for North Melbourne, essentially for free. In fact, they're actually getting paid to take him on. And North Melbourne's salary cap situation, as you can imagine, is fairly good. They have probably the most free salary cap out of any club in the land. Not only that, but they get pick 19 in this deal as well. So North Melbourne could profit massively from this Gold Coast salary dump. And it's really unfortunate to see as a neutral Gold Coast needing to do these things. The circumstance of needing to overpay players over the last few years. We saw Peter Wright go for something 
like a fourth rounder last year. They're kind of bleeding a little bit. At least in this scenario, they get a future second back, which helps with some potential academy players I think that they want to acquire next year. In terms of Jordan Clark, we did know the situation was that uh, he's contracted and Geelong were asking for a late teens pick or an early 20s pick to be able to pry him loose for Fremantle. Apparently, the Cats have flat out rejected 27, which I kind of saw coming. It's a little bit unders. At the end of the day, he's contracted, and then they've backed it up by asking for pick eight, which is quite laughable, really. I understand they're in the position of power here, but asking for pick eight for a player that you know wasn't even in your side this year, you clearly don't even really rate him that much. To ask for a top 10 pick, it's just disingenuous. And Geelong have been notoriously difficult to trade with in recent trade periods. And I do respect that. I wish my club was a little bit harder to deal with than they are. But still, you run the risk of burning your bridges with certain clubs if you just refuse to deal with him like this. So there's no chance Fremantle are going to offer up pick eight for Jordan Clark. But I don't know whether they'll potentially flip it for two later picks and end up with giving something you know in the early 20s to Geelong. I'm not too sure. To be honest, it's not something I would recommend. I don't think Jordan Clark has really earned the reputation where you would be willing to trade it down from eight to acquire him. So they may need to wait and see what happens with the Adam Chera deal first before Fremantle know what picks they have to deal with. But I could see this one being a stalemate and Jordan Clark staying at Geelong. To round out the trade news, uh, I think Jonathan Segler from Hawthorne has been told to explore his options. He's probably, I think he's about 30 years old and Hawthorne with their list clearly need to push a little bit for youth. So they've been linked to looking at Max Lynch as a potential replacement and looking to offload Segler who has been linked to the Cats who obviously love older players and need a Ruckman. So that one makes sense. It stands to reason that even though I sort of previously linked Laddams to Geelong and they were interested in him, you You'd imagine their salary cap would be fairly tight at the moment. So Jonathan Segler adds that short-term solution while they try and maybe add another prospect through the draft or something like that. Anyway, guys, that is my take on all the recent trade news. I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about tomorrow and I will aim to do these updates as much as I possibly can. I do go back to work Wednesday, so it might get a little bit tougher, but I'm already enjoying the trade period. I've been listening to trade radio all day and, you know, basically nothing happened, but gee, it's fun, all the speculation. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think about some of the deals that I've talked about. Let me know in particular your take on the Jordan Clark Geelong situation, because I think that's a funny one. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.